So I'm going to read you chapter 3 in a second, but I want you to listen very closely because at the end of the chapter, I'm going to set you a challenge, something that I want you to write about for your own magical story and adventure. Because from my bookcase to yours, we're going to create many, many stories together, and I can't wait to read out as many of them as possible. So, without further ado, here is the book. It's The Giraffes of Whispering Wood. We're on chapter three. There are videos of chapter one and two that you can listen to to catch up, and we have a free ebook of the book available as well if you want to read along. But here we go with chapter three. Will stared through the open gates. He realised immediately that there was no hole in the wall. He wasn't looking into the zoo. Instead, if he could believe his own eyes, he was looking through a magical entrance to somewhere else altogether. Will stepped forwards carefully. The world beyond the glowing gates seemed dark at first. Then Will saw a few glowing dots of light bobbing in the darkness. He could make out giant shapes. What were they? He listened and could hear leaves rustling in the breeze. Will was fascinated. He didn't understand why, but he felt drawn to the strange world beyond the gates. He took a step closer and stopped. What are you doing? he asked himself. He suddenly wanted to go home. His instincts told him to drop his brush and paint and run back as fast as possible. His route home flashed through his mind. A few dark streets, the alley, Rhea's house, the back gate, and then home to safety. Back where the world obeyed rules back where the world made sense. Rhea's house, thought Will, and then a question popped into his head. What would Rhea do? He didn't need to think for long. She wouldn't hesitate. She wouldn't run home. No chance. He remembered what she had said to him yesterday. Where's your sense of adventure, Will? She was right. He thought... She would go through this strange portal without a second thought. Grandma River's words came back to him. All you need to do is believe. Will gripped his paintbrush and stepped through the glowing gates into the nighttime world beyond. He was plunged into a world of near darkness and stopped, waiting for his eyes to adjust. He realised that he was taking short, shallow breaths. The air felt a little cooler and fresher in his mouth and throat. The scents of fresh wood and damp earth filled his nostrils. He shifted his feet and realised that the ground beneath his feet was softer. The hard pavement, the heavy city air, the smell of exhaust fumes from moments earlier, all of it had disappeared. Even without being able to see it properly, Will realised that he was somewhere quite different. Suddenly, two dots of light bobbed and fluttered towards him. As they approached, Will could see that they looked and moved like butterflies. Except these butterflies were glowing and seemed to be made of nothing but pretty patterns of light. They fluttered close to Will's head. In alarm, he raised his arm to protect himself and hit himself on the head with his paintbrush. Ow! he said. He rubbed his head and immediately felt a bump. He looked at the paintbrush and almost dropped it in complete surprise. It had changed. It was thicker and heavier in his hand. It felt like plastic rather than wood, and he could feel a switch under his thumb. He pressed down on the button. 
the object in his hand jolted powerfully, and a brilliant beam of light suddenly appeared. Whoa! That is one bright torch, said Will. He pressed again, this time holding down the button firmly. He was in a clearing, surrounded by tall trees. At least they looked like trees. As he battled to keep the beam on one of them, Will noticed that the bark was frosty white, like an arctic fox. To Will's astonishment, as he watched, the white bark peeled back from the trunk and branches to reveal what looked like words written in black on the wood underneath. Will tried to read the words, but his hand, wrist and arm were throbbing with the effort of controlling the torch, and he was forced to release the button. At that moment, there was a noise behind him. Will spun round and found himself staring at four slender legs that stretched up higher than his head to a sandy-coloured body covered in brown patches. Will stumbled backwards and fell on his backside. The giraffe in front of Will placed its two front legs far apart and it lowered its long neck in one graceful movement until its chin was almost resting on the grass in front of Will. Will found himself staring into a pair of huge masked eyes with long eyelashes. Why do giraffes have long necks? said the giraffe. Will nearly jumped out of his skin. You, you, you can talk? he stammered. The giraffe nodded slowly. Well, it said. What, what do you think? Why do giraffes have long necks? Will glanced up at the giraffe's long, curving neck. So you can reach leaves high up in the trees, right? He answered. The giraffe gave him a goofy grin. No, silly. It's because our feet smell. Will blinked at him dumbly. The giraffe rolled its big, glistening eyes. Long neck? Smelly feet? It's a joke. Get it? Sure, said Will, uncertainly. I'm Sam, said the giraffe. I'm a spying giraffe. A spying giraffe, repeated Will. Sam continued. I'm really pleased to, to see you and to be the first to say hello. Hello. Hello, said Will. Uh, my name's Sam, interrupted. The night zookeeper, yes, we know. All the giraffes are waiting to meet you. The time-travelling elephant told us that you were coming. The time-travelling what? said Will. You know, Maggie, said Sam. Will shook his head again. He was wondering if he might be dreaming. After all, he was talking to a giraffe in a forest with trees like newspapers. He must be dreaming he decided, until he felt a blast of humid breath ruffle his hair and a moist, muscular tongue lick him from chin to ear. Yeah, Will said, wiping gloopy dribble off his cheek. He clambered to his feet. What did you do that for? Because you're the new night zookeeper replied the grinning giraffe. There must be a mistake, said Will. I don't work at the zoo. I'm not a keeper. I've never even had a pet rabbit. Sam the spine giraffe cocked his head and examined Will. Well, why are you wearing that then? Will followed the giraffe's gaze to look down at his own clothes. Whoa, he exclaimed. He was wearing a long blue coat over his school clothes. There was an elephant symbol on the right sleeve of the coat. This, this isn't mine, he muttered. Suddenly, he sensed something sitting on top of his head. He reached up and removed a peaked cap with the same symbol on the front panel. 
nor this, he added. Told you so, said Sam. Welcome to the night zoo. Thank you for coming to save us. Will frowned. Save you, he said. Like I said, this, this must be all a big mistake. He started to back away. Really, I'm, I'm not a night zookeeper. I'm, I'm no one special. I, I just go to school. Walking backwards, Will stumbled over a root and his hand brushed against the tree of a trunk, trunk of a tree. Careful, warned Sam. Can you show me the way back? Will asked. He felt something cold and sticky on the back of his hand. He held up his hand and saw that it was covered in a thick grey tar. A terrible smell wafted up from the sticky substance. Ugh, he said again. It smelt like a combination of drains, Grandma River's favourite stinky cheese, and his little brother's pee socks. Will looked at the tar-covered tree next to him. Broken branches lay scattered around the base of the trunk. Shriveled leaves carpeted the ground. He glanced at the other trees nearby. Many were ruined in the same way. Silky grey tar dripping from their bare branches and snaked down their trunks. He turned to Sam, who shook his head sadly. Now do you see why we need you, Night Zookeeper? said the giraffe. And before Will could protect himself, Sam slurped his long tongue up the side of Will's face again. Okay, enough with the licking, said Will. I'm literally covered in dribble and tar. Did, did you bring it with you? asked Sam. Bring what? replied Will. The orb? said the giraffe. Will looked at him blankly, and then his eyes flew open. Will rummaged in his short pockets. Nothing. He stuck his hands into the deep pockets of his night zookeeper coat. Right in his hand, it closed around a spear. He pulled it out and held it up towards Sam. The giraffe's dark eyes sparkled with excitement. The orb! he cried in delight. Maggie said she'd find a way of getting it to you. Come on, we can't waste time. Let's go. Go? Go where? asked Will. But the giraffe had already circled around and was galloping away towards the edge of the clearing. <gasps> That's the end of chapter three.